This month on All Hands Television, we look at the contributions of USS Kitty Hawk CD63. And we start the new year with a look at physical and financial fitness for our sailors. Now your host, Petty Officer Sally Foster. Welcome to the program. As the Navy gets ready to add its newest nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the George H.W. Bush, to our fleet, we will also be saying goodbye to another ship, the USS Kitty Hawk. Petty Officer David Michael Ross brings us a story about how the Kitty Hawk has carried out our maritime strategy for almost 50 years. She has represented our nation by being forward deployed, projecting power, and engaging in humanitarian missions whenever called upon. As the USS George H.W. Bush CVN-77 becomes a part of the U.S. Navy fleet, it shares a proud legacy with supercarrier USS Kitty Hawk CV-63. And while the Navy looks forward to its core capabilities and maritime strength, it owes a great debt to the USS Kitty Hawk and its half century of service. After boot camp, my orders were for the USS Kitty Hawk. And that was a brand new ship that was just commissioned like, uh, well, it was just commissioned about a week before I got on it, actually. I went down to the, uh, uh, it was in Philadelphia, and I, uh, I got off the bus and made my way to the pier, and I saw this monstrous ship. <laughs> I've never seen anything so big in my life. She sailed from Pennsylvania, stopped in uh, Trinidad, Brazil, Chile, and Peru along the way. Uh, I have visions of, you know, seeing places. Uh, one of the things about the Navy, you know, join the Navy, see the world. At that time, the Cold War was in progress. Khrushchev had decided that Kennedy wasn't ready, that he was weak, and he in, uh, indulged in a number of provocative acts. However, we came through the uh, uh, workup and the test remarkably well, and we were on our way then to go to the West Coast. It was a huge crowd on the dock, and we had welcoming speeches and all of that. The only thing I saw was my family. They were all there on the dock waiting for me, and uh, that was perfect. There's a long history of our effort to prevent Vietnam from falling under the control of the communists. That is what we are now attempting to do, and as the war has increased in scope, uh, our assistance has increased as a result of the requests of the government. The war in Vietnam changed the perception of the U.S. military. What do we want? When do we want it? Now! You want it, Tucker? What do we want? The mission of the Kitty Hawk during the Vietnam War was to project air power uh, against our enemy, North Vietnam. Uh, the, the ship was also engaged in uh, providing sorties for air support in the South, South Vietnam, and also launched strikes against Laos and Cambodia. The ship deployed nine times during the course of the Vietnam War. It fought during every year of the Vietnam War from 1964 all the way up until the end of the war. It was instrumental in almost every major air power campaign, uh, including Rolling Thunder during the Johnson administration and, most importantly, Linebacker during the Nixon administration. The greatest honor history can bestow is the title of peacemaker. This honor now beckons America. During the second phase of Linebacker, Linebacker II, it convinced the North Vietnamese to agree to a peace treaty that was agreeable to uh, the Nixon administration. The United States and the Democratic Republic of Vietnam expressed the hope that this agreement will ensure stable peace in Vietnam and contribute to the preservation of lasting peace in Indochina and Southeast Asia. The strategy, of course, Im Im was imposed on the Kitty Hawk. That same strategy continues today, in my view. I think the Kitty Hawk carried out its uh, role in that strategy exceedingly well. Towards the end of the Vietnam War, the turbulent civil rights era in America found its way off the coast of Vietnam the Navy was not immune to the many challenges of race relations during that time. In October of 1972, protests were brought about by the Kitty Hawk's African-American crew members. Although 47 people were injured in the riot, and it was a terrible tragedy for the Kitty Hawk, the riot actually led to some fairly good things for the Navy. It provided Admiral Zumwalt, the CNO, 
uh, with a catalyst to push through diversity programs that still resonate in the Navy to this day. Without the ability to recruit a diverse workforce, to, to draw people from every corner of American society, we wouldn't be the strong Navy that we are today. We wouldn't be a role model for the world. In December 1979, the Kitty Hawk supported contingency operations in the North Arabian Sea during the Iranian hostage crisis. Later that month, her mission changed to support yet another contingency operation after the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Throughout the Cold War, the Kitty Hawk has always been uh, an ace in, in the president's deck of cards, a way to project power, use sea power, create security throughout the world. Kitty Hawk has also helped, and the crew on board has helped many, many times. Uh, for example, immediately after the Vietnam War, many Vietnamese people fled from communist persecution and Kitty Hawk responded in uh, 1981. She helped to rescue Vietnamese boat people who were lost at sea and would have died had they not gone to their rescue. Uh, about a decade later, we intervened in Somalia to help with the United Nations to help distribute food to people that warlords were depriving them of, and Kitty Hawk did the same thing. Her aircraft flew over these warlords, uh, like Mohammed Adid and some of the others, and told them, you know, you will allow these convoys to get through. And while she was there, the food got through to these people. For a decade, the Kitty Hawk has stood as the Navy's only permanent forward deployed aircraft carrier. We needed to have aircraft carriers that could deploy quickly to the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. And what happened was when we would try to surge aircraft carriers quickly and send them across the Pacific, it could take up to several weeks. The Kitty Hawk has been at Yokosuka, Japan since 1998 and has been a vital part of the Gulf War in both Operation Enduring Freedom in Operation Iraqi Freedom. It was used as a platform for special operations to chase down the Taliban and, uh, and uh, bin Laden and al-Qaeda. And at the time, it was, it was in Westpac during 9-11, but was able to quickly reconfigure, get over to the, get over to the, uh, the Gulf and prosecute missions the Kitty Hawk has been relieved by the USS George Washington CVN-73. It, it was one of our finest uh, warriors during the Cold War and certainly a workhorse carrier, not only during the Vietnam War, but also during uh, Operation Enduring Freedom and even Operation uh, Iraqi Freedom as well. An era is over. Um, my last connection to the Navy. Um, I'm sorry to see it go. I'm still proud. All Hands Television will be back after these messages. The day is beautiful, the road is clear, but a fun ride can turn deadly in the blink of an eye when you're speeding. So how much of a factor is speed in this case? Let's see. At 60 miles per hour, the force is like driving your bike off a 12-story building. The answer could be fatal. What do you do when you want to snowboard, but there's no snow? Try sandboarding. Started in Southern California 30 years ago, sandboarding is finally catching on around the world. And the dunes near Florence, Oregon is the perfect spot. 
I would say that the best way to describe sandboarding is probably uh, an adrenaline rush. It's a lot like snowboarding, uh, wakeboarding, all the other board sports, but it has its own feel to it. It has its own adrenaline, and it's definitely very fun, thrill-seeking kind of a thing. Sandboards are shorter than snowboards, have a harder bottom surface, and the bindings are more like sandals. For a beginner, the sand is a lot more forgiving than hard packed snow, but it's still a good idea to start on smaller dunes before you graduate to steep slopes and rail tricks. Hey, thanks guys for what you're doing over there. We really appreciate it. And if you're ever in Oregon, come surf a dune with us. Sandboarding on the Oregon coast, another awesome American adventure.